Hi, welcome to module one. I'm Mark Lubrick. I'm going to be working with you in this and future modules. I'll be helping you with the videos. Hopefully that will demonstrate what you need to know for the modules themselves when you're going through and trying to do the questions. And in module one in particular, we're going to be looking at um, kind of basic questions, ones that really only involve addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and brackets as well. So let's look at some of the key ideas that you're going to need to know for this module and future ones. Because it is worth noting that module one is kind of the starting place. You will want to work through this one before continuing on to the others because everything builds on this module. So first things first, even looking at signs. The idea of adding two terms, subtracting two terms, how does that work when you start introducing negatives? Well, the simplest case we could consider is kind of silly. I could have something like three plus a positive 2. Now you've probably never seen it written this way because no one would bother. A positive 2, well the positive and the positive make a positive. I'm not even going to bother finishing solving this, but you can see this is the equivalent. 3 plus a positive 2 is the same as 3 plus 2. A positive and a positive make a positive. But what if I had 4 minus a negative 6? Well, the negative and the negative cancel to make a positive. So we get 4 plus 6. Great. Well, the basic idea here is the same signs make a positive. Two negatives or two positives ends with a positive. But you could also look at the idea of, say, 7 minus plus 3, a positive 3. Well, this is the same as 7 minus 3. Again, you wouldn't really see it written this way, but that's the way you're thinking. A minus of a positive makes a minus. And alternately, if you had, say, 8 plus minus 6, positive and a negative still make a negative. So if you have opposite signs, it makes a negative. If you have the same sign, it makes a positive. And of course, you can get more complicated. You could have this applied multiple times. Um, kind of a silly example is, let's say I had minus 4. But that was itself times a minus, which is itself times a minus. Well, easiest thing is work it two at a time. Work your way inwards and go, well, a minus and a minus, what does that make? Well, according to our rule, two of the same signs make a positive. So I can combine this minus and minus to become plus. We still have the minus 4 in the middle. You can only combine 2 at a time. Now we're combining these two. Plus and a minus. Well, opposite means we end up with a minus. And so no matter how many complicated terms you want to introduce, you just keep applying the rule 2 at a time. And eventually figure out what you get. Work your way inward and you're going to see it'll work out. So, But how about the actual equations? Like what are we really trying to do in these problems? Well, usually you're going to have some x. I mean, it's a cliche math thing. You're trying to solve for x. 2x plus 3. Let's say you have an equation like this. You ultimately want to solve for x. Get a value for it. And normally this would be equal to something. I'm not bothering doing that yet. Just like I didn't bother solving these. Because you're going to have a lot of examples in the other videos of me solving equations like this. But how do we even approach this? We want to get x on its own. That's the key. You want x equals something. So you have to get x all on its own. Because we'll have an equal sign. I mean, it's just arbitrarily. If I said equal to 4 or something, you could solve this. How? Well, we want to get x on its own. So what we have to do is remove these other terms. I have to remove everything on the same side as x. I have to remove the plus 3. I have to remove this 2. How? Well, what we're trying to do is do the opposite of what's being done to x. You do the opposite. So if I want to remove this plus 3, so if I have an addition, and I'm just going to say add, if I have something adding to my exponent, or sorry, if I have something adding to my variable x, to get rid of it, subtract. Subtraction and addition are, tech, are the opposite of each other. So if I had something subtracting to get rid of it, I would add. So what do I mean? If I want to get rid of this plus 3, I would subtract 3. We'll talk more about that in a second. And if I had multiplying, so in this case I have 2 times x. If I wanted to get rid of that 2, I'd have to divide the 2 out. Same as if I had division, I would multiply to get rid of it. You can really think that addition and subtraction are the opposite 
of each other while oops, if I spell properly well, multiplication and division are the opposite. If you have multiplying, divide. If you have divide, multiply. If you have addition, subtract. If you have subtraction, add. Well, great. Can we do that even? I mean, can I just arbitrarily start adding and subtracting and multiplying and dividing? Whatever I want? Technically, yes, if we're doing it properly. The key thing in math is to remember it's always BS. We always have to do BS. It's always both sides. So if I want to get rid of this 3, as I said, well, according to this, I would subtract. I'd subtract 3, but I have to do it to both sides. As long as I do it to both sides, I'm okay mathematically. Subtract 3 from both sides, they really kind of counteract each other. So to get rid of the plus, I'd subtract. To get rid of the multiplying, I would divide. And you divide by whatever is being multiplied. So if I want to get rid of a multiplied by 2, I would divide both sides by 2. So always both sides. Well, great. That helps, hopefully. But how do I even start? I mean, I've got a 2, I've got a 3 to eliminate. Where do I even begin? Which one comes first? Well, hopefully at some point in math, you've heard of the term bed mass. I'm going to write it this way because you can think the Division and multiplication are together. The addition and subtraction are together. This is kind of the order of operations. The way you solve your math questions, you were told probably to go through bed mass. Well, what does it stand for? Brackets, one of the things we said would be in this module. Exponents, which we're actually ignoring in this module. We'll introduce it later. Then we got division and multiplication, addition and subtraction. This tells us the order we should go in, with division and multiplication being at the same level and addition and subtraction being at the same level. So it doesn't matter which of those you go first. You'd have, and in our case, when we're solving for x, again, we want to get x on its own. To get it on its own, we do the opposite. And to figure out the order, we actually do reverse bed mass. Reverse bed mass. So let's see. I'm going to rewrite an equation like this. Let's say I have 2x plus 3. I'm not going to bother putting the equal sign because we don't need it. To get the x on its own, what do I do first? I got to figure out which of these terms I get rid of. Well, ver reverse bed mass tells me addition and subtraction comes first. So I'd get rid of the 3 first. To get rid of the plus 3, I would subtract 3 from both sides. Then once I'd gotten rid of that term, I could worry about the multiplication, going in reverse bed mass. The only real complications come in when we start introducing the brackets. That's the last thing we solve. So when you start having brackets, you got to solve everything outside the bracket first. Kind of like peeling back the layers and getting towards the center. So if I had something like 5 right here, well, I wouldn't be able to get into the bracket until I get rid of this 5. Get rid of what's outside the brackets first. And let's say I made it even more complicated. I don't know, I had minus 8 here. Well, then I'm looking at this and going, there's multiple things outside the bracket. Back to reverse bed mass. The subtraction would get dealt with first. To get rid of a minus, I add to both sides. I would add 8. Because you can think minus 8 plus 8 is 0. So it cancels it out and moves it to the other side. So I'd have to get rid of the subtraction first. Then, according to this, I'd be able to worry about the multiplication. Then I'd be able to worry about the brackets. And then within the brackets, I would get rid of the 3 first and then the 2. And it doesn't matter how many brackets I put out outside this. I can make it more and more complicated. I would just work with each bracket first. I'd have to get rid of the minus 2 in this case. And then I'd be able to work into the brackets. So it's a reverse bed mass. And you're wor if you have brackets, you're kind of working out the components outside the bracket first. Getting progressively in towards the middle. And ultimately trying to get x on its own. So do the opposites. Um, it's also worth noting, by the way, that if you look at the key concepts, that a lot of these ideas are reiterated there, so you can use that as a reference as well. Good luck.